I strongly suggest you get a housing for your iPhone or any smartphone. Salt water kills electronics. I don't normally do talking head videos, but today I am. I had a lot of folks ask me about my underwater settings for the iPhone 13, and here are my recommendations and settings that I prefer based on my type of diving. If you have an iPhone 13 already, you may be following these tips. Uh, if you don't have one yet, I recommend the Pro or the Pro Max. It's up to you, your preference. I chose the iPhone 13 Pro. The Max for me was too big for everyday use. If you are serious about using your iPhone for underwater photography, the next consideration is phone storage. Do not get the one with only 128 gig. Get at least 256 or more. 256 is the lowest storage option for the iPhone 13 Pro and the Pro Max that supports 4K ProRes video recording at 30 frames per second. Obviously, 512 gig or one terabyte will give you much more, but the cost goes up significantly. With the 256 gigabyte, you can hold roughly 70,000 photos or 98 hours of HD video. I opted for the 256 because the price fit my needs, and then I increased my iCloud storage to cover the extra capacity that I needed. First thing you want to do is save your phone's battery life. The battery life on the iPhone is pretty good to begin with, reported 17 hours or so, but it helps. Say you're on a dive boat and doing three, four dives a day, you want to conserve that battery. More than likely, you're on vacation and many of the apps you have on aren't needed. Swipe up, closing any open apps except for the camera app, any app you really need, and the app managing your iPhone underwater housing if that is required. My Dive Volk C-Touch 4 requires no app, no battery, and no vacuum pump. I do put the phone into airplane mode. This is a major contributor to saving battery. As for settings to turn off, go to your display and brightness, turn off auto brightness, and true tone. Then turn your brightness down but not as much that you can't see the settings underwater. Remember, underwater light is a premium and you may need to change your settings so you want to see it. Turn off your cellular data or Wi-Fi if you can. Turn off Bluetooth unless your underwater housing requires it. At least turn off mobile hotspot. If you are really concerned, you can then turn on low power mode in your battery settings. Then go look at battery usage and see which apps are still using battery. If you've already closed the apps, you could, if needed, uninstall any unused apps. If you are still worried, go to general settings and turn off background app refresh. Settings to turn on. Most iPhone underwater housings recommend you turn on the following under accessibility. Turn on assistive touch, turn on tap to, or raise to wake. I also turn on bold size since underwater I want to be able to read my settings quickly. There are settings you can't change. You are unable to make any stabilization changes nor any lighting changes like EV or ISO. You have to fix those post-production, which I generally do anyway. Here are my settings for the camera app itself. I have the camera format set to high efficiency, and I have Apple ProRes on. This will increase your storage needs a lot. One minute of 10-bit HDR ProRes is 1.7 gig for HD. That jumps to 6 gigabyte for one minute at 4K. Since I do most of my post-production on a MacBook Pro and it can handle larger file sizes, this works for me. If you have an older machine or less storage, then turn ProRes off. In video mode, I normally shoot 4K at 60 FPS. I use this so that I can slow footage down later if I want to. The annoyance is that the iPhone 13 Pro won't let you do ProRes at 4K 60 FPS, only at 4K 30 FPS. But if I want to switch to a lower FPS 30 on the fly, I don't have to remember to change the ProRes settings also. I rarely shoot slow-mo, so I have it at 1080p, 120 FPS, 240 is just too much storage. I have HDR video on, since as I mentioned, I normally edit in Final Cut Pro be, uh, before uploading the video. 
If you push video directly from your phone to social media site, then HDR video may look a bit overexposed to you. I mean, it adds an extra editing step for me, but I like that additional quality. I have PAL turned off. PAL is a television video format used in many other countries outside of North America, so it's not really applicable here. I have auto FPS set to auto 30 and 60. This helps if I enter a wreck and I find myself in a low light situation without a strobe. Top side, most people shut this off, uh, so it won't slow down your FPS. But if you are cave diving or night diving, you might want to shut it off completely and just set the video to 24 FPS right from the get-go. I have macro control off so it doesn't jump to macro focus when I'm using the 0.5x wide angle lens. I do put lens correction on and I turn on grid to help with framing in view and horizon leveling. I have outside the view turned on, allowing the iPhone to capture content outside the preview frame. This way, any additional content comes into view when you're using the crop tool in Photos app, and you can change the composition to match your vision. Once in the camera app itself, my settings are as a videographer. As I mentioned, I'm not a still photographer. I've used both portrait and photo. I haven't really used pano or time lapse much. While I'm sure there is merit here, they're not really in my repertoire. If you take away one point from this video, it's to shut off live mode. This will help you with both still and video. If you accidentally put live mode on while you're using your touchscreen, you will end up with a video that is basically two seconds long. That's it. Turn it off and leave it off. Now, you also have to make sure in preserve settings for live mode, that is switched on. This way it won't reset if you switch camera modes while you are underwater. In video mode, I normally use base 1x. Uh, if I'm shooting a wreck or something big, I'll use the dot 5x, which then switches you to the wide angle 27 millimeter lens. To zoom, I use 3x or swipe to an either, you know, even greater 9x, uh, remembering that images will be grainier the more you zoom. I turn off the flash to prevent backflash hitting the housing's glass face. If you do cinematic mode, remember, it too resets to a default f-stop unless you preserve settings. It records 1080p at 30 fps, defaulting to an f 2.8, you can switch to a higher f-stop if you want, if you have a touchscreen housing. You'll need to focus on your subject, say a nice big grouper, tap on the screen where the fish is, and then set the focus. This is great for a slow moving object, but I find it challenging to do this while the subject is swimming away faster than you can catch it. Yet another reason I don't normally use cinematic mode underwater. I also like to have much of the images I take as sharp as possible. If you want to reduce the background blur, try pushing the depth of field indicator in the upper right of the screen and increase the slider bar up to say 16. If you want to increase the blur, move the slider down. A range between 5 and 8 generally gives you a more natural depth of field. I'm going to repeat my concerns with the cinematic mode in post-production in this next techie part of the video, but I want you to not make the same mistakes I did. With all the hype over cinematic mode, it only allows 1080p resolution at 30 FPS. So, at this juncture, no 4K at higher FPS of 60 or 30. Additionally, the workflow for exporting these cinematic files is painful. If you do all your editing on your phone, this might not be a problem for you, but if you edit on your computer, it is. Once your cinematic video is done, you must open it in Photos on your phone. Verify under Media Types folder that it processed in cinematic mode to ensure it captured the correct codec. If not, open the video and hit Process. If you do editing on your computer, you only have really two options to transfer it off the phone. You can airdrop it to your computer, but that too has a mini workflow. It's critical before doing the export share, you click on the options link for sharing first. Select all photos data as on, click done, then you can send it to airdrop. Once in your download folder, you should see several files. Select the one that has simply the name and .mov without any additional letters in it. 
do a get info on the file and validate the codec has dish timed metadata in it. If not, then you don't have a cinematic file. I strongly suggest you do not delete your cinematic videos from iPhone unless you can see this codec in the downloaded files, even if you're trying to save space. If you mistakenly delete your cinematic video, even if you see it sitting up in iCloud Photos, you're sunk iCloud Photos is not the same app as what's on your computer or on your phone. It cannot do cinematic processing at this time. If you import your video back onto your iPhone and then try to process it in photos, you will find the codec is gone and it's just a blurry HDR. You can also transfer files directly into Final Cut Pro. Attach the iPhone to your computer. Once you are in FCPX, go to Import Media, go to your phone, Photos, and the video you want. Again, make sure you have Process at first in Photos on your phone. You can then import directly into FCPX. Could take a little longer for larger files, so be patient. Once the video is into your Final Cut Pro timeline, just like other 4K videos, you need to use the HDR tools from the Effect menu. Drag it onto the clip, change the codec for Rec.709 SDR from HDR to HLG. Scroll down, you'll find the checkbox for cinematic, click on it, and then you can edit. Now that we've covered my normal process, which is using Final Cut Pro on my Mac, uh, I like that my videos are right there on the iPhone. While the Photos app has its limitations, it's an easy app to use, and most Apple users are familiar with it. I recently got to dive again with my daughter for almost the first time in 17 years, and since it was a special occasion, I wanted to post a video on that very day while still on the boat in Cayman Brack. I trimmed the video that had her in it, ensured I saved it on the iPhone as a separate clip, being careful not to delete the original, then I posted it immediately to social media. I didn't have to use any other special app or software to make it happen. And like I said, while the Photos app is not as robust as Final Cut Pro, it did the trick. I have several other videos specifically around the iPhone 13 and the Dive Volk C-Touch 4 Max underwater housing. Check them out. They have details not covered in this video. I hope you found this video informative. As I mentioned, these are my preferences for the type of diving I do and what has worked for me. If you have any feedback or information on what could work better, I would love to hear it. Send me a note. I may end up changing some of these settings. Anyway, go enjoy your iPhone underwater. Take some great videos. Send me some notes. In the meantime, check out some of my other videos, not only on the iPhone 13, but on the Dive Volk housing and many of our rec dives. We just posted one a little while ago. And then, as always, go explore. Get wet.